Telltale's early games were kind of a mixed bag. For every Sam and Max, there was Jurassic Park. Every strong bad was countered with Law and Order. Through all their releases, though, they've consistently refined their presentation and visual style into a sort of preset that they can apply to each new IP. Along with the tweaking of those two factors, though, there seems to be some disregard of, or more likely a forced cost-cutting approach that dismisses some of the same technical issues that are repeated in series after series. Still, Telltale's particular take on the adventure game genre has emerged as a clear winner. Their brand of old-school style gaming mixed with a focus on quality storytelling, all in an easy-to-access playstyle, clearly puts them at the top of their field. A lot of their success is owed to their first season of The Walking Dead, which they followed up with The Wolf Among Us, which I would argue is their most polished product to date. Their latest projects are Minecraft, Borderlands, and Game of Thrones. The question is, can they take the magic, the essential ingredients that make each of these titles a hit outside of the adventure gaming world and make them work within their system? The first episode for season one of Game of Thrones, titled Iron from Ice, immediately establishes itself within the continuity of George R. R. Martin's long-running Song of Ice and Fire series. A large encampment of men celebrate their latest victory on the night of a very special wedding. And yeah, it's that wedding. These are the men of Lord Forrester, sworn bannermen to Winterfell. They're there to celebrate the wedding of their king, Rob Stark, on the land of Walder Frey. We begin by taking the role of Garrod Tuttle, squire to Lord Gregor Forrester himself. Lord Gregor is most pleased with his squire and informs him that he soon will be elevated in status and will be able to join the fighting. He is to keep this fact a secret for the night. The Lord also asks him to keep an eye on his eldest son and the best of the Forrester fighters, Roderick. If you're a fan of either the books or the show, you should know that a. When something good happens to someone, or B. When someone is tasked with watching out for or protecting someone else, there is hardly ever a positive outcome. Something the matter. Garrett soon begins to suspect the Frey betrayal, but by then it's far too late, and the slaughter begins. The young Tuttle races towards his lord, witnessing the death of Roderick and countless others along the way. Finally, after locating his wounded mentor, they attempt to make their final escape. Lord Gregor's wounds are too grievous. He implores Garrett to take his family sword and retreat back to their keep of Ironrath. He instructs the young squire to repeat a phrase to no one other than Duncan Tuttle, Castellan of their lands and the boy's uncle. Garrett witnesses his lord's death as he turns to flee, and then we fade to black, cue the Game of Thrones theme music, and take a deep breath. It's a great way to open Telltale's entry into the Game of Thrones lore. They directly tie their story to a major milestone in the Thrones timeline and do so without muting any of the cruel violence, betrayal, and at times sheer hopelessness that has fueled the storylines for years. Iron from Ice builds its story arc very well, beginning with an important event and stepping back to establish characters in various parts of the land of Westeros, and then concluding with another shocking event. The gameplay here is pretty standard telltale fare. Minor use of an inventory system, heavy focus on looking at things and talking to people. Moments of action are punctuated by simple quick time events. The only new mechanic, if you want to call it that, is the ability to control several characters, but this is much in the way that Martin's books have chapters that focus on individuals. After playing as Garrett, you will spend some time as both Ethan and Mira Forrester, and then back again. Young Ethan is now the Lord of Ironrath. Thrust into leadership, he must deal with disagreements within his house, threats of rival House Whitehill, and the impending arrival of their new Lord Bolton's son, Ramsay. And if you know who he is, it's never good to see him. Mira's time is spent in King's Landing as handmaiden to future Queen Marjorie Tyrell, who attempts to lobby for her family's protection from the Boltons. Poor Squire Garrett is on the run to the wall after an unfortunate event at his family's farm leaves him accused of murdering Bolton men. I'll make you proud. You already have. Iron from Ice eschews the hard black lines of the comic book style presented in The Walking Dead seasons for a more painterly effect fused with a brighter color palette. 
This is reflective of the many changing landscapes of Westeros. This graphical style is somewhere between oil and watercolor. It works well within the characters themselves, but has some difficulty in defining the edges of characters and objects where it's paired with a blurring effect that can be quite distracting. This was a quirk I became less aware of over time. There were several other issues throughout, however, that I could not ignore. Characters would sometimes randomly pop in and out of frame, occasionally disappearing before a scene would end, and sometimes rushing to pop in as your character moved forward. Similarly, the controllable characters would sometimes jump cut forward or suddenly move with increased speed when a distant object was clicked on. This all comes with an animation assistant that sometimes appears to cut corners. Movements feel truncated and stilted as if frames were removed to tax their engine less. This has been a constant throughout their releases, even as budget and sales increase. It may be a product of having too many series going on at once. There were also a few instances of audio repeating itself and the occasional pops, which I've found fairly commonplace in Telltale's work as well. Despite any peculiarities with the mechanics and visuals of the game, it remains firmly grounded through the quality of its overall presentation. One of the things that keeps it rooted within this universe are the ties to events and characters from an already established world. They inform the backstory and create a place already inhabited and real, even for those not familiar with the stories of the show. For those that are fans, including characters voiced by their real-life actor counterparts, adds to the sense of familiarity and on the whole, their work is well done. Ah, Lady Marjorie, aren't you For my taste, Telltale has created a first episode that is at once recognizable and yet still able to stand alone. Murder, betrayal, the death of innocence, and or characters you were just beginning to like, it's all here and established in episode one. Though some may decry that the stories always end the same in Telltale games, or that their decisions don't matter, my feelings are that Though the destination may be the same, the, the journey is what really matters. Their more recent works have shown that choices can very much change the journey, and in the case of The Walking Dead Season 2, it can actually heavily impact the ending. I look forward to the next entry into this series, coming in February. Telltale Games' Game of Thrones Season 1, Episode 1, Iron From Ice, was reviewed on PC via the Steam version. I'm giving this one an 8.5 out of 10.